Hello and welcome to Today Pass. You join me at Yedding Driving Test Center, where we're going to do a whole test route. I'm going to show you the test center now, everything that you'll need to do on your driving test. So if you're new to the channel and you like videos like this, make sure to subscribe and ding the bell so you're notified when there's new uploads for driving test routes. My name is Scott. This is Today Pass. A like on the video will help me out tremendously. And let's go. So I've never been here at Yedding Test Center before and we must make sure that we know the way in and the way out because the way in and the way out are completely different ways so we're just driving past the test center before and this is actually quite new to me I've never seen this before so there's a lot of testing that goes on at Yedding test center and it is quite a difficult test area to do so I'm going to show you some of the tricky parts here at Yedding test center and try to help you out so that you pass your driving test first time. So Yedding Test Center here, they have the heavy goods vehicles uh, following the sign here for the exit. So you might have to deal with going around some lorries here and quite a lot of traffic following the exit signs. And there's a 10 mile an hour speed limit here. So make sure that you abide the speed limits and don't go any faster when you're entering or exiting your driving test center. We have another sign here saying exit. So this is all new to me, so I'm just following that. I can see there's a sign here on the left, just checking my interior mirror and my left mirror and signaling left to let any traffic around me know exactly where I'm going. So here we have a ramp. I'm gonna to start to slow down as this bump looks incredibly high. I'm now doing roughly a walking speed to come up to these giveaway lines and come to a stop. Now there's only one way out, so you will turn right. Make sure you do plenty of observations. Right, left, right is the minimum observations at any junction. If you can't see clearly, then look more. Peep and creep is a method for junctions where observations are near impossible. So you creep out gently as far as you need to in order to see the road clearly. Check both ways, which is the peeping part, and then you'll know if it's safe to actually emerge out of the junction. So here we must only go left, but again, I'm gonna check my mirrors and signal left. Position nice and close to the curb here on the left, and then there's no confusion which way I'm gonna go. Now I'm coming towards one of the busiest roundabouts here, Willow Tree Roundabout. I'm gonna go straight. I need to use the center lane with the straight arrow to go straight. Checking the traffic on my right. I can see the position of the wheels on the vehicles on the right, so I know exactly where they're going. And I proceeded to enter the roundabout because it was safe for me to do so. Notice how I kept good lane discipline, keeping to the far left lane, making sure that I don't straddle the lane markings and go into the lane on the right. We must know exactly what lane to use and follow that lane perfectly around the roundabout towards the exit that we need. Now here we have a narrow road with oncoming traffic. So we're gonna take caution, slightly slow down the speed of the vehicle. This road has no speed signs on it, so this would be a 30 mile an hour road. However, it would not be safe to do 30 miles an hour. I'm currently doing 20 miles an hour and that feels safe enough to me. I wouldn't want to go any faster. As I go around the park vehicles, I'm checking my interior and right mirror just to make sure that there's no overtaking traffic like motorbikes and then I know it's safe to emerge out. If I'm gonna merge in over to the left, interior mirror, left mirror, before I actually change the direction of the car, here I'm moving out, change the direction to the right, interior mirror, right mirror, and change the direction to move out. At the traffic lights, turn right. Yes, Mr. Examiner. Mirror, mirror, signal, and position. Speed, start to slow down to roughly a walking speed, to a stop, where I'll need to wait for the traffic light to change. Now it's quite hard sometimes to see the traffic lights because we have these pillars here. So if you can't see, just lean forwards, maybe look up, but I actually have a little screen down here which shows me the traffic light. So I'm going to watch that. So we have just completed Willow Tree Roundabout following the road down here to this junction where I'm gonna turn right. This is gonna take me up to the target roundabout. This one is a controlled roundabout with traffic lights, but very intricate as it has multiple lanes. We will be asked on this route to either follow the sat-nav or follow the signs. 
Now I'm going to do my routes by following the signs. So I'm scanning down the road. I can see that the right lane will merge into me here. So I'm just checking interior mirror, right mirror to make sure there's no merging traffic from the right hand side. This pedestrian is giving me a little bit of a worry, as you might have seen there on the video. He didn't look too stable and sort of stepped out there. But watch the pedestrian's feet. If they're stationary, they'll be side by side. If they're in motion, one foot in front of the other. This can help you to make a decision whether to keep going. Bicycle here, plenty of clearance. Keeping roughly one meter or more, if possible, two meters, which I have, maybe even slightly more than that. Nice wide road here. It's safe for me to give him more room. Now, here we have a bus lane. It's out of hours at the moment. This is very important. If you know that you can use the bus lane, you must use the bus lane. If you don't use the bus lane when you can use the bus lane, you will fail your driving test. Very, very important. How do you know whether you can use the bus lane? Look at the sign. The sign here on my left shows me the times of operations. This is the blue sign up here with the picture of the bus and underneath it it says Monday to Friday 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. If it's outside of these times which are the times of operation if it's outside of those times you can use the bus lane. If it's free and safe to do so you must use it. Now we're approaching the sign here and I'm going to follow the sign towards C London. That's the second exit. C London, Central London. Second Second exit, normally we use the left lane, sometimes at big roundabouts like the Willow Tree roundabout, the left lane might be left only. So leave at least a car length from you and the vehicle in front and you'll hopefully see the road markings as we can see now. A40W, just on the left hand side of the motorbike in front of me, that is where I'm going, that is Central London A40, that was also on the sign and you might be asked to follow the sign to A40 Central London, sometimes the examiners will change the actual name but it's still the same direction, so make sure you know your roundabouts and you know where you're going Plenty of practice if you're doing a test at Yedding Test Center. The lights are changing now. I'm just checking my side mirrors or all mirrors to make sure there's no motorbikes filtering traffic. I'm using the left lane. So I started in the left lane, going to keep the left lane. I've passed the first exit. I'm taking the second exit. This is where I check my interior mirror, my left mirror, and signal after checking the mirrors. Now I'm telling everybody I'm leaving the roundabout, exiting the roundabout. Make sure the signal doesn't stay on. So have your finger ready to cancel the signal, which I've just done. So I don't mislead this pedestrian. She may believe that I'm going to enter into the shops here on the left. Look at the sign for the bus lane. We're told the same times of operations as the previous bus lane. This means I can use the bus lane. So I'm going to keep this lane and keep going forwards as it's free to use and it's necessary because it's out of operation. Very important you know this. Only use the right lane for turning right or overtaking. We're going to have a sign a little bit further down this road. Now normally if you do use this route it will be outside the time of operations for the bus lanes as the times for operations are peak times rush hour and this road is just full of cars during rush hour so just be mindful that it's less likely for you to do this right uh, do this route it's not impossible but less likely for you to do this route if it's at the peak times during the morning as in anything from 7 a.m through to around 10 a.m., then you will most likely not go this way, okay? But it's definitely worth practicing. Mirror, internal, right mirror signal. Notice I actually just checked over my shoulder a little bit to make sure that it was free and there was enough space for me to change lanes because the bus in front was stationary. So if I see that early awareness, if I plan early, mirror, mirror, check, signal, then it's very easy to change lanes. Central London. So having a look here, I can see the sign for Central London. A40 again is the third exit turning right. This is the, uh, make sure I say the right name here, target roundabout. And the previous roundabout was 
the White Hart roundabout. So these are the two super busy roundabouts controlled by traffic lights. Now you can see there's roadworks happening here on the right. So I'm unable to actually use the right lane on this occasion to turn right. However, normally we would use the right lane to turn right. Now this lane also goes right. Most big roundabouts, when you have three lanes on the approach, you can also use the center lane to turn right. I'm just making sure this bus doesn't get too close to me on the left and I'm sticking to the middle lane okay so I'm next to the cones like when I started past the first exit mirror mirror check the side on the left and I'm going to mirror mirror check to the side on the left come into this lane I'm just checking to see if there's traffic keep the signal going red traffic light here easy to miss guys when you're looking at the lanes you're checking to see if there's vehicles around you this is taking your attention off of the road ahead so when you do your mirror checks make sure they're just quick oh yeah quick one second look two seconds is too long and then make sure that you look ahead again that way you won't lose focus of any traffic or traffic lights that may change red now that we're here i'm going to check my mirrors signal left again because i've passed the second exit this is the perf perfect opportunity to show your left signal to exit so i've passed the exit before the exit i want to take that's where we start to signal not beep the horns like all these people we're not going anywhere are we so beeping the horns not really going to help now pop quiz what is the correct reason for beeping your horn is it a to get people out of your way or b to make people aware of your presence yes you answered that correctly b to make people aware of your presence now because i've been waiting here for a while i'm checking to see if the traffic on the side has started to move just as a precaution so that i know what i'll need to do if i need to actually change lanes or stop or go i'm just looking at the information now i'm still following a40 this is this lane the right lane the left lane goes to southall back to the test center we'll be making videos about southall test routes soon so if you do like these videos make sure to subscribe and ding the bell for notifications when new videos are released now the speed limit on the a40 here is 40 miles an hour and i know that because my car tells me if this car goes over the speed limit it will make a warning chime to make me aware that I'm reaching the speed limit so I don't exceed it and fail my drive there it is and fail my driving test for use of speed okay so that's another nice feature on this vehicle to make me aware of my speed super important especially during the 20 mile an hour zones so here we are on the a40 and I'm still following signs towards central London so if we look up here can we see any signs of central London? No. And that's the very difficult part about following signs of central London. When you don't know where central London is, you're going to be on edge constantly trying to look for signs, maybe even thinking you might have missed the sign. So here I have a vehicle joining. The correct thing for me to do if a vehicle's joining is to maintain a two second gap. I'm going to take the sign here on the left, the green one. When it reaches the sign, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. So I'm almost three second gap away from that vehicle in front. That's absolutely fine as long as it's more than two seconds. That applies to dry conditions like conditions we have today. So the sign for Central London tells me to keep going straight ahead. But in fact, this would be the part where the examiner will ask you to actually exit. That would be the end of the independent drive. I will give you directions from now on. Thank you, Mr. Examiner. I'm going to keep the right lane because I know I'm going to be turning right at this roundabout. The examiner will now tell us turning right at the roundabout third exit so we're going to use the right lane we're going to check our interior mirror right mirror signal right we're going to start to adjust our speed make sure we've taken the correct position as in what lane you'd need to use and then we're pretty much done for junctions so there is a routine for junctions guys mirrors signal position speed look i'm in the right lane i'm going to proceed to keep this second to right lane this is going to help me. Can you see the arrow in the lane? I'm going to stop here so I can talk. The traffic light was turning yellow. And what does yellow mean? Prepare to stop. Flashing yellow. What does flashing yellow mean? 
prepared to go. So make sure you know the difference between what color light comes after a steady yellow light or amber, or a, or flashing yellow light or flashing amber light. Okay, so this is why I chose this lane and not the very right lane. There was two lanes approaching the roundabout. I was in the right lane. The right lane gets the two lanes on the right. The left lane gets the two lanes on the left. I chose this lane because it's my lane and it's going to help me to be closer to the exit. For the one that I need. If I was in the very far right lane, I would have to cross over an extra lane to get to the exit, which may not be a safe opportunity. So even talking about opportunities, I could have moved that one lane over here, mirror, mirror, signal, as I've passed the second exit. Good time to show everybody the signal. And I could actually check to see that it was safe to move one lane over and keep to the very left lane, which is ideal for exiting a roundabout. If I can't make the very left lane, I can keep this right lane that you can see on the footage here and use the right lane to exit the roundabout. I can see there's a car coming up quite quickly on my right right side now and a lorry in front, mirror, mirror, right. And then I know it's safe to actually move around the lorry that was reversing into me. And also I can see that there's enough safe dif distance from the vehicle behind in the right hand lane so that I'm not just cutting people up, which is dangerous. If we cause anybody to slow, stop or swerve when it's not necessary, this is the three S's. They're very important. Three S's. If you commit one of the three S's, you will receive a serious fall. Turning right, mirror, mirror, signal right, move into the zero zigzags in the middle of the road to take the middle position. If I need to stop and wait here like I do because there's a cyclist here, this is where I wait, check my mirrors again before actually committing to the turn. That way I know it's 100% safe. A lot of people see cyclists like that before, or maybe they don't, before they're turning right and they think, oh, it's just a cyclist, they're not important, and they turn right. This is incorrect. We must take care of all road users, no matter what vehicle they're on. These speed bumps are a bit horrible. I'm going to check my mirrors and actually go around the bump here. The guy behind me looks like he wants to overtake. He's constantly beeping his horn and looking to veer around me. He's turning left. I can see that. I'm turning right on the mini roundabout. Mirror, mirror, signal right. And it's safe because there's no vehicles on the right. So I've actually turned right on the roundabout and that's safe. And I've done my precautions by doing my mirrors, doing my signal, doing my position, doing my speed from running to jogging to walking speed, to slowing down and stopping if it's necessary because there is traffic on the right at the roundabout. If there's no traffic on the right and I can see that clearly, then I can turn. Take the next road on the left, mirror internal, left external mirror, and signal left, and then I know it's nice and safe, and everybody knows where I'm going next, and that's the way we want to show the examiners how we turn. Okay, so this road is particularly tricky, especially if you do get the garbage disposal or rubbish trucks, depending on what part of the world you're from, you may call them different names. So this road here, if you get oncoming buses or garbage or rubbish trucks, then it can make the road incredibly narrow as it's already quite narrow with parked cars. You can imagine how it will be if you have a large vehicle oncoming or stationary in the road. So you may have to go around these rubbish trucks. So plenty of forward planning. Make sure you look down the road as far ahead as possible. Mini roundabout here. Now, if your examiner does not give you any direction, you follow the road ahead. So there's no direction given, follow the road ahead. I'm checking my mirrors to see what's following me and if it's safe to change direction around the parked cars. Now I'm scanning the road ahead for those rubbish trucks or for the oncoming buses. This Mercedes is in front. It's quite far away so I'm going to proceed to keep going. Looks like they're doing a driving lesson. Ah, how's that? I think I know who that was. Right, anyway, it's back to the test route. Okay, so we're down the center of the road here. There's no oncoming traffic, roughly keeping one meter from the cars on the left and one meter from the cars on the right. This is just the convenience that it's a safer area, safety bubble. You're keeping one meter from parked cars on the left or whatever's on your left is the correct position to be in. It so happens that that kept me roughly one meter from the right, which is a perfect place to be in case anyone over opens the doors. No directions given, no vehicles on the right. I proceed to follow the road ahead at the roundabout. Coming up, we have another mini roundabout. I'm checking through all my mirrors, starting to slow down to roughly a jogging speed, which give me plenty of time to observe, 
good observations, very nice and open here. I can see into the road on the right clearly, and there's no traffic looking to emerge out at the roundabout. Therefore, I have priority and I have emerged out at the roundabout. If you think you need to go slightly on the white circles at the roundabout so that you don't hit the pavement, this is necessary and safe. You're allowed to do it, but make sure it's necessary and safe so that you don't crash into anything or it's helping you to avoid crash into anything. This is what would mean is necessary and safe. Okay, you're not going to fail your test for going slightly on one of the painted white circles on the road. As long as you don't go the wrong way around the roundabout or 100% on top of the roundabout, you will be fine. Okay, so now again, I'm just down the center of the road. I'm driving at roughly 15 miles an hour. This is a residential road, very windy. I'm doing my best to stay in between the lines, but as long as it's safe and necessary, it's not Abs it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but the danger is if we go too far from the parked cars, I'll demonstrate that now. So we go too far, look, I'm 100% on the wrong side of the road. This would be an immediate fail because it's not necessary. So even if the road ahead is clear, make sure you take your position. Talking about lines, there was lines on the left here, give way lines for the road on the left. I needed to go over those to allow the bus to pass me. So we went to this area earlier about being safe and necessary. Was it safe for me to go across the lines? Yes, I'm not going to crash in any any obstacles there. Is it necessary? Yes, because if I don't, the bus isn't going to get past. So I must go over the lines. Just like this area here, I must be over the center line to keep one meter from the parked vehicles on the left. Sometimes people think they must always be inside the lines on the road. Well, if you can't because it's not safe, then it's necessary for you to go over them. So I hope that really helps you to analyze and answer the question whether you need to be where you are in the road, okay? Any questions, please put them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. At the end of the road, turn right. There's a keep clear zone in front of me here it's marked out with two solid lines one above the keep one below the clear if i can go over those lines brilliant i can stop here and wait do my observations it's nice and clear reach the middle line and then turn don't turn before you reach the center of the road unless you need to to avoid an accident now i'm going to be going back towards the test center i'm going to go straight at the roundabout second exit can you see the sign here telling me what lane to use good can you see the road marking telling me what lane to use good. So you know what lane to use to go straight. This is an unorthodox roundabout, which means the left lane is left only. And we had a sign and road markings telling us the cars on the right are exiting the roundabout. I can see that by the wheels, mirror, mirror, signal left. Make sure I keep to the left. I've checked my mirrors a few times. Anybody on the zebra crossing here? No, I can proceed. And if somebody was in the middle and there was a middle part to that zebra crossing, there was an island, I would need to stop. If they're not in the middle and they're on the far right hand side on the other side of the road, I can actually keep going because that's a zebra crossing with an island in the middle, which means you treat it as two separate crossings. So as long as no one's using my half of the crossing, I can keep going. Now, zebra crossings are a big inconvenience at roundabouts as you're focused on the road, the lanes, and all the traffic around you. And then you either enter or exit a roundabout and there's a zebra crossing. So immediately you have to scan the crossing and make sure that there's no pedestrians near the crossing about to use the crossing. If there is and you see this, then you'll need to start to slow your vehicle early, making sure that you stop gently at the zebra crossing. And this shows your examiner that you're aware and planning early and this is the secret to a safe driver after plenty of practice and experience you will become more aware and more act earlier more safe okay mirror mirror signal left and i'm turning left here to come back down towards the actual test center which is further down the road just after the roundabout which is at the end of this road uh, which is where we started, okay? So that's the willow tree roundabout. So this is taking us back down towards the willow tree roundabout now, where we will finish off this test route. Uh, a like on the video will help me out tremendously. So if you've come this far through the video, I hope it has been very beneficial. Um, this is more or less uh, an intense sort of driving test route here, obviously giving you lots of advice as we go. 
um, to hopefully help you pass your driving test first time. If you do have any uh, questions, like I said, put them down in the comments below. Okay, keep your head moving nice and gentle. So when you go through all of these obstacles like parked cars, you know it's safe and you can move around and move back in. It's a nice sort of habit to have, to have this fluid motion in the head. Um, and if you're interested in doing any of the intensive courses, please go to twodaypass.com and you'll be able to have a look and see if there's one of the courses that appeal to you. Uh, all courses are held at Pinner Driving Test Center, which is far more relaxed. Oh, mirror, mirror, signal right, position right lane. Look at the wheels of the vehicles on the right. They're all turned and twisted to the left, which means they're gonna exit the roundabout. Mirror, mirror, signal left. And I passed the second exit where I did my mirror, mirror, signal left. And I'm taking the third exit here, turning right back towards the Edding Test Center. Now, on your driving test, you will be asked two show me, tell me questions. So let's quickly run through two show me, tell me questions. Would you be able to tell me how would you know if your headlights and taillights are working? Okay, Mr. Examiner, I would switch my headlights on and walk around the video to check to, uh, the video, walk around the vehicle to check to see that they're working. Brilliant, that's a show me time question. Next one would be, show me how your horn's working. There we go, nice and easy. Push the big circle in the middle of the steering wheel, which is the same in most vehicles, to show them how the horn's working. Now, a lot of people get a little bit, oh, can I beat the horn? I'm not supposed to do that, am I? Well, yeah, the examiner asked you. So, no, no harm, just do that, beat the horn, your examiner's asked you, and you've completed your show me question. Now, a lot of people think you can't fail for your show me, tell me questions, but you can. If you don't answer your show me question, this can be a serious fault. You need to know how to operate the various functions on the car safely to be a safe driver. So here we are, I'm only allowed to go left, but again, I'm just doing my mirror signal position. I'm keeping to the left, leaning forwards a little just to see, holding the left lane, and actually, I need to be in the right lane. But that's okay, this might happen to you on the test. So I'm not gonna change because there's cars there, they're very close. If I changed, I would have an accident. Now, that's the first time I've ever been to Yedding Test Center. And we're gonna go back in there now, uh, but your examiner might ask you to actually use the right lane when you get to the end of that roundabout. Now, sometimes people can get confused, get stuck in the left lane like I've just done. It's not a big deal. Mirror, mirror, signal left, and all we do, sorry, mirror, mirror, signal right, all we do is keep to the right lane on this roundabout, and we go all the way back round to where we were. Mirror, mirror, signal left, and here we are back over onto the left lane. Now, in order to get back into the test center, this is gonna test my knowledge now, there's a little slip road just before the big roundabout up here. So you can either go all the way around the roundabout that we just did, or better yet, all the way around this roundabout. So I'm gonna make another video on Yedding now. I'm gonna do another route now where I will now know, because I've practiced this, the best way to come back to the test center. So you'd actually do a right on this roundabout, coming back this way, mirror, mirror, signal left, and then turn down here where it says heavy goods vehicle, just before the willow tree roundabout. This takes us back in towards the test center. So there you go, that was a, oh, I don't like that bump there. Check my mirrors, I'm going round that bump. Hit that one on the way in. And then mirror, mirror, signal left, and this is the way back in to the driving test center here on the left. Okay, I'm just gonna pull over here. Now you may be asked to do bay parking on your driving test, where they will have bays further down the road where the test center parking is. I'm just parking here for convenience, and you'll be doing your bay parking in the actual test center bays. So that will be forward or reverse bay parking. Now, I haven't done the maneuver on this video. Uh, I've got other videos on the channel regarding maneuvers. So if you're interested in seeing that, go check that out. It's on the playlist underneath maneuvers and hopefully that will help you out. I've been Scott. This is Two Day Pass. A like on the video will help me out tremendously. And stay safe, stay tuned, and I'll see you next time.